Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here on this Wednesday, the 12th of May, 2021. Thank you for tuning in. And guess what? <laughs> they've discovered a crack on a bridge and they've shut down traffic on a bridge. Massive amount of traffic backups and everything else. Well, let's get in there and let's take a look at what's going on. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look. Uh, adding to the logistical chaos rippling through the country is a bridge closure across the Mississippi, Mississippi River between West Memphis and Arkansas and the Mississippi, Tennessee due to a fracture in the frame, according to the local news. Okay, so uh, we're going to go down here and take a look at the bridge. This is a picture of the bridge, and evidently it's right in the center of the bridge. This crack is down near the bottom. Looks like it's not far off of the water. The water's probably down beneath there, not that far down. Uh, probably 20 or 30 feet, maybe, or something like that. You know, I mean, the crack's down near the bottom of the bridge. Let's take a look at this crack. Here's the crack in the bridge. It looks like it's a crack in the steel. Now, there's, there's nothing here I can see for really for sizing to, to know the size, but I'm just going to guess. I'm going to say that that... That piece of square tubing, and that's what they call steel like that, you know, it's square, uh, is probably like four feet by about three feet or something like that. It's probably like an inch thick, very thick steel, you know. Now look at the way we were as a country, as a nation, back 20, 30, 40 years ago. The way we are now, compared to the way we were then, the way we were back 30 40 years ago we'd say oh it's an emergency let's fix that and let's get traffic moving again and so what they would could do is they would bring in a couple boats maybe tugboats or whatever have a boat with a crane on it you know and they'd bring in a team of welders and they would buy some one inch plate you know or whatever and they'd get them up there and they would they'd be welding like crazy all day and then toward the end of the day, a paint, painting crew would come across and paint it to the same color green as the rest of the bridge, and they'd have a, uh, a repair. Like, see, if you break your arm, you don't say, well, well, my life is over. You put a cast on it, and you fix it. You know, it repairs. Well, that's what this needs. This needs to be repaired, you know. And But the way we are now... And the way we were 30 years ago, I'm talking about what we would have done 30 years ago. We would have had that fixed in one day. We would have brought the welders in, brought the crews in, brought in a boat or whatever, because this is important, right? But now the way we are is totally different. Now we'll look at the crack, and we'll say, well, uh, let's close everything, and let's bring in a team of engineers to assess it. How long is that going to take? Oh, I don't know. It might take a week or two to get the proper engineers in to assess it. And then we're going to have to do a computer modeling. And then we're going to have to... And it just goes on and on and on endlessly. While they assessed the problem. It's bureaucracy. Has run amok. Not just in government, but in every aspect of our lives. It's getting to the point now where you can't really do anything unless you have it. It, it doesn't enable uh, you to accomplish things. It, it 
it slows everything down because everything has to be done a certain structured way. You know? And this bridge, in, in my mind, I'm having a little rant about this because this is causing terrible inconvenience for a tremendous amount of people. The bridge carries traffic on I-40 over the Mississippi River between Memphis, Tennessee and, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Figures from, nine, from 2018 show that the bridge carries about 37,000 vehicles per day. So every day, 37,000 people are going to be inconvenienced by a little crack? Well, I shouldn't say a little crack. It's one hell of a big crack. But, you know, it's just, this is just to me the epitome of what's happening with our society and why our society is in decay is the fact that this crack probably won't get fixed for gosh knows how long. It's certainly not going to get fixed today, you know. And we were a society at one time where that crack would be fixed probably by tomorrow morning. You know, and such a thing as welders. You ever heard of welders? You know, I mean, my father was an excellent welder. He could probably repair that crack in a few days all by himself. You know, he was good at stuff like that. He's always having to do work on big, uh, he worked on big container trucks and everything else, you know. Uh, toward the end of his life, he was working uh, for a, a, a garbage company. And he was working uh, to uh, repair their big uh, uh, skid-on containers that go on. One giant container goes on the back like of a semi-truck that carries garbage, you know. And those containers get roughed up really bad, you know. And they get cracks like this all the time. And they're big. They're not small, you know. Like, we're talking about like 20, 30 tons or whatever, you know. And... and quarter and three-eighth inch six steel plate and everything that he was welding on and stuff and you had to use cranes to lift the plates up and everything anyway this crack right here is a little bit bigger yet but you know i mean in, in a shipyard they would have that thing fixed really fast but this isn't going to happen this isn't going to happen because our society is becoming more and more bureaucracy it's becoming more and more so that you can't it's it's effectively slowing down people now from even finding a job because people tell you, say hey you know uh, what am i going to have to go through if i go and i start working again well i'm going to have to leave off all this unemployment and all these benefits and this and this and this and, and i've done a lot of work to try to get these benefits and stuff i've signed countless papers i had to send in you know and and and, and it goes on and on and on you know the whole thing is, is the way it's structured and the way it's moving and the way it's being structured is that it's just red tape everywhere in our society, you know, and it's growing. This isn't something that's getting less of. This is something that's getting more of every day where it's putting a stranglehold on the people so that the, if they want to do something, if say they want to put a, a swimming pool in their backyard or whatever, you gotta have a special license and a special permit. You gotta do this and you gotta do that. First, first, all these steps, you know. Ah, uh, what's our world coming to? Ultimately, especially when there's a fracture in our monetary system. It was created in 1914. It started. Basically, they restructured our monetary system in the United States of America when they started the Federal Reserve. And when they restructured it, they did it on a place called Jekyll Island. They went out there. Nobody knew what they were talking about. Nobody knew what they were doing. It was all like secret meetings and everything else between these bankers and stuff. And they structured the financial system with the Federal Reserve at the head, which is a privately owned institution, by the way. And ultimately, what they did was is they, the way they structured it, it was a Ponzi scheme that relied upon exponential growth. Well, we don't live on an exponential planet. And so what happened was, is the growth did continue. And the monetary system continued to grow because it's a Ponzi scheme. That's what Ponzi schemes have to do. They have to grow. So it continued to grow and it continued to grow, the Ponzi scheme. Until the world had expanded to the point where they weren't building any new factories. Everything, the world is finite, see? 
So by 2008, the world had built out to the point where it couldn't continue with this exponential growth. And what happened is, is in 2008, we had our first major contraction. But instead of allowing it to contract, because the way it was structured originally to begin with, if it contracts, it all blows up, basically. It all just disintegrates. So they couldn't let that happen in 2008. They said they come within two hours of the world disintegrating, or the financial system basically imploding on itself. So what did they do? They continued the expansion. Except they couldn't expand fat and build new factories and, and find new places and find new resources, and they couldn't keep expanding in the real world. They had to keep expanding the monetary supply in cyberspace, basically with what's called, I call, and what's been dubbed Fugazi. The Fugazi is fiat currencies that don't really exist except on paper. So they kept up with this expansion from 2008 till the present. Well, that's a long time ago, 2008. What's happening is, is now we're running into the results of what this expansion has caused. Along with the expansion, they have to keep expanding Fugazi in the form of government. Like, more government employees because we're losing employees in other sectors, you know, and, and create more temporary jobs. And it just, it goes on and on and on. And what are we going to do? Well, we just can't sit in the office all day. Of course, we got to create more paperwork for the people so that we can process all that paperwork and we have something to do. And that way we need more employees. And... What's happened is this whole thing is spinning out of control now at this point to the point where they're not even going to be able to fix a broken beam on a bridge without going through tremendous bureaucracy. What I mean by bureaucracy is I mean goodness knows how many structural engineers they'll have to come in and take a look at that thing before they even, uh, before they even, even start the welders. And they probably won't even fix it. Well, knowing how bad they are with bureaucracy now, they'll probably tear the whole freaking bridge down, for crying out loud, just to replace a broken beam. You know? And seriously, what this is going to lead to in the end is because the dollar is a Ponzi scheme, we're in the final stage. 97% of the value of the dollar has been lost over the years since the founding of the Federal Reserve. They only got 3% left. That means our dollar is only worth three cents. Soon it's going to be two cents. And then one cent. So what that basically means is, is your purchasing power, your dollar right now. Right this minute, if we, if we assess that purchasing power. It means that probably about three years from now, it's only going to have a penny's purchasing power from what it has right now. And so, yeah, they're going to keep paying everything. They're going to keep paying your Social Security, but what can you buy with it? They're going to keep paying everything. They're going to, they're going to keep printing and paying, but what can you buy with that Fugazi? In the end, you're not going to be able to buy hardly anything with it. You're, if you're on a fixed income or you're trying to live off a retirement off of a bank account or something like that, or you got a pension plan, they're going to pay your pension plan. They're going to pay all the government's unfunded liabilities. I think it's something like $140 trillion or something like that. They're going to pay it all. They can't quit paying it. They can't quit paying their unfunded liabilities. That's called bankruptcy. Well, where are we going with all this ultimately in the end? You better have your gold and silver. And you better have some you better have something of real value. I don't care what it is. Even if you own a car or you own a house or you own something outright, the, the things are real and they're real in the real world. This Fugazi that they got, when you go into the bank. And you're in front of the teller. And she's got that little screen hidden behind you there. On that screen, she's got a bunch of numbers. For your bank account. How much money's in there. That's as real. That money is as real as World of Warcraft money. The gold. You know, gold in these games. You play these games and you get game gold. 
That money is as real as the game gold. That money is, is it doesn't exist in the real world. It's Fugazi. And so assessing what the purchasing power of that money is, it can go to zero. And it can go there very quickly once everybody in the world starts to lose confidence in it. That's what's happening right now. People are losing confidence because maybe you go online. Maybe you want to buy something like uh, maybe an air conditioner or something. You know, you go on Amazon this this month. You look at air conditioners and say a window air conditioner. Say it's uh, $189. You'll go on there next month and it'll be 225 of course you're going to lose confidence in your purchasing power when you see prices going up that fast. And shipping. Shipping's going to go up massively. You know, when you used to go on there, you used to see all these things. Will you still see them? Free shipping? That's going to be gone probably in another year. And you're going to have to get used to paying like 10% for shipping. And there will be no more free shipping on, on items. You know? Uh... I'll tell you guys, it's just a cry and shame what's happening, but we got to go through. This is a process that's taking us from what we used to have. We didn't know our system was corrupted, just like we didn't know that there was this giant crack in the bridge until they focused on it and closed the bridge. That crack might have been there. Looks like it's rusted to me. I, I, I swear I see rust in the crack. That that See that coloring there inside that circle? It looks like rust, and, and that means that that crack is nothing new. That crack's probably been sitting there for the last six months. People have been driving over it. Didn't notice it until maybe they came and did a bridge inspection. They were like, oh, my gosh, there's a big crack in the bridge. What are we going to do? Well, you know, what causes that crack is... The foundation of the bridge that goes down into the mud of the river has moved a little bit. The Mississippi is notorious for moving, you know. The Mississippi River. Okay, guys. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the very next episode. Bye-bye.